James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is a man who perseveres in the trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. The environment and facilities are very different in different dwelling places of heaven. The houses in the third kingdom of heaven are big and magnificent, and there are two-story buildings. They are decorated so beautifully and splendidly that no billionaire of this world could imitate any of these heavenly houses. Why does God the Father treat the people in the third kingdom of heaven so exceptionally? That's because those who go into the third kingdom of heaven have accomplished sanctification. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres in the trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. The fourth level of faith is the faith to love God to the utmost degree. Since we love the Lord to the utmost degree and more than ourselves, we can give up ourselves. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and all the TV viewers, when one person was testifying about the heavenly kingdom, he said this. When he saw the sight of the heavenly kingdom for the first time, he was so surprised that his mouth was wide open in amazement. Then a little angel next to him whispered to him, Please, close your mouth. The beauty of the heavenly kingdom cannot be expressed with any kind of language of this world. Even if we know about the heavenly kingdom in great detail, we still wouldn't be able to close our mouth if we actually were to see the sight of heaven. Even the lowest dwelling place in the heavenly kingdom is much better than any place of this world. But, the environment and the facilities are very different in different dwelling places of heaven. Between them, the second kingdom and the third kingdom are as much different as heaven and earth are different. If the people of the second kingdom of heaven see the third kingdom of heaven, they would not be able to keep their jaws from falling open in amazement. How much more it would be for seeing New Jerusalem. At this time, I will first talk to you about the environment of the third kingdom of heaven. Through this message, I hope you will have greater longing for heavenly kingdom. I pray in the name of the Lord that with that longing heart, you will take hold of the third kingdom of heaven and even New Jerusalem. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I just told you that the, different, the difference between the second kingdom and the third kingdom of heaven are so different. Now, let me explain how things are different. First, let me talk to you about the houses. Please look at the screen, okay? The houses in the third kingdom of heaven are big and magnificent, and they are two-story buildings. They are decorated so beautifully and splendidly that no billionaires of this world could imitate any of these heavenly houses. Well, that's just the drawing, okay? The actual houses in heaven will be much more beautiful and splendid. The gardens are adorned with beautiful and fragrant flowers and trees. There are lakes that give out brilliant lights. In the lakes, there are different kinds of fish of many diverse colors. In the second kingdom of heaven, the owner of the house can have only one facility that he favors most in his house. For example, if he wants to have a golf course, he will have a golf course in his house. If he wants a swimming pool, he will have one. But in the third kingdom of heaven, every kind of facility that the house owner wants will be given. In his house, he can have everything, such as a golf course, swimming pool, a ballroom, etc., etc. In this way, he doesn't, have, he doesn't need to use any facility from his neighbors. He can enjoy anything in his house as much as he wants. Compared to the first kingdom or the second kingdom, it is really exceptional treatment. You know, and they can invite some uh, their friends and then play together and then play games between them all together. They enjoy their lives like that. 
Why does God the Father treat the people in the third kingdom of heaven so exceptionally? Well, I'll tell you in the next session in more detail, but that's because those who go into the third kingdom of heaven accomplish the sanctification. Also, during their lives on this earth, they voluntarily gave up everything of this world for the Lord. They gave up everything that they could enjoy and only follow the will of God. Since they have faith, they gave up everything in the world because only the faith can please Father God. And they struggled against the sin to the point of shedding blood only for the Lord. Being sanctified is what Father God truly wants from you. For this, God the Father is paying back to them as they have acted and sown according to His promise. Mark chapter 10 verses 29 and 30 says, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left the house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses, brothers and sisters, and mothers and children and farms, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Dear brothers and sisters, even the houses in the third kingdom of heaven that will have all the facilities that the house owner wants cannot be compared with the houses in New Jerusalem. The houses in New Jerusalem basically have all the facilities that the owner wants. But the size, beauty, and honor of the houses are very different from those in the third kingdom of heaven. The size is different. If we say the houses in the third kingdom are 60, the houses in New Jerusalem are about 100. And that is, the smallest house in New Jerusalem will be 100. Here, the size of the house is not just the area of the building, but the area of the land, including all the facilities. Therefore, if we say that the land of the house in the third kingdom of heaven is 600,000 square meters, the land of the smallest house in the New Jerusalem will be at least 1 million square meters. Therefore, even the biggest house in the third kingdom of heaven is much less than the smallest house in New Jerusalem in terms of the size and every aspect. Just by saying this, we can understand how pleased God will be with those people who have accomplished the whole spirit and go into New Jerusalem. The size is not the only difference between the houses in the third kingdom and those of New Jerusalem. The beauty of the shapes is different and the jewels that decorate the houses are also very different. In New Jerusalem, there are so many kinds of beautiful precious stones, not only the 12 jewels that make up the 12 foundations. There are jewels that, gave out, that give out various, you know, uh, enrapturing lights. There are also jewels that are immeasurable in size. There are just too many kinds of jewels to name them all. Some of them give out double-fold lights, or some others triple-fold lights. Of course, there are many kinds of jewels in the third kingdom of heaven, but the third kingdom doesn't have every kind of jewel that exists in New Jerusalem. The jewels that give out double-fold or triple-fold jewels exist only in New Jerusalem. The jewels in the third kingdom of heaven give out beautiful lights that cannot be compared with the lights coming from jewels in the first kingdom or the second kingdom of heaven. But compared to New Jerusalem, the third kingdom has only basic jewels. And even the same kind of jewel is not as good as the one in New Jerusalem. Dear brothers and sisters, one characteristic of the houses in the third kingdom of heaven is that they don't have door plates, unlike the houses in the second kingdom of heaven. It's the same with the houses in New Jerusalem. From the houses in the third kingdom and New Jerusalem, unique fragrance that expresses the heart of the owner comes out. So, even without the door plates, people can understand whose house it is. Not only the fragrance is different, but the lights of the houses are also different. According to how much they resemble the heart of God, 
they will give out more beautiful fragrance and light. Even on this earth, houses of celebrities are well known to people. They are houses of big businessmen, world-renowned movie actors and stars, or palaces of kings or presidential residences. Even without door plates, people know whose house they are. Likewise, because those who go into the third kingdom of heaven have great honor, people just know whose house it is, even without door plates. Also, compared to the number of people in the whole heavenly kingdom, the number of those who go into the third kingdom is few. So, it's even easier to know whose house belongs to whom. In New Jerusalem, it's even easier. Dear brothers and sisters, the service of the angels are also different in the third kingdom and the second kingdom of heaven. The angels in paradise mainly do the maintenance work of the public facilities. They sometimes deliver God's message. Angels in the first kingdom and the second kingdom can help the children of God when they ask for help. When they use any of the uh, public facilities, the angels kindly show them about and guide them in using the facility. The angels help the children of God to feel most comfortable and happiest. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? The level of service of these angels is different in each dwelling place of heaven. It's similar to receiving different levels of service when we travel in first class, business class, or economy class, or in an airplane. From the third kingdom of heaven, the magnitude and level of service of the angels are all completely different. That's because people will have personally ministering angels. And it's not only one angel, but some of them will have multiple numbers of angels. According to how great faith and obedience they showed on this earth to please God, they will receive more personally ministering angels. So, just by seeing the number of angels given, we can feel the honor and glory of each person. For New Jerusalem, sanctification is basic. With the sanctification, only those who have been faithful in all God's house will enter New Jerusalem. Therefore, the number of angels given personally will be much more than people in the Third Kingdom. That's because the houses in New Jerusalem are greater, and there are more maintenance and other kinds of work that needs to be done. Even the smallest house in New Jerusalem is so much bigger than great mansions of this earth. You should not think about tens of or hundreds of thousands of square meters. To maintain these big houses, how many angels would be needed? There should be angels to maintain all kinds of facilities and things that are given as rewards. There are angels that take care of only crowns and angels that take care of only clothes depending on how greatly you give glory to Father God, you are given those rewards. Whenever you give glory to Father God, you are given rewards. Also, there should be angels to take care of every facility in the house. Angels will maintain gardens, golf courses, swimming pools, and amusement parks. Other angels will escort visitors, prepare and manage banquets, and still other angels will play the music and dance. There will be so many angels needed. Well, don't you think you're going to invite your friends or your lovely people and have some games, like, you know, running races or play golf, and you are going to invite them to your banquet, right? Even in the third kingdom of heaven, all facilities that the owner wants will be given, and thus there will be many angels given as well. The personally ministering angels love and revere their master. Especially, the personally ministering angels in New Jerusalem can understand the master's heart. Even though the master doesn't tell anything, they read the master's mind and do it for him. They serve their masters in the best way. People will be treated in a way that even princes and princesses of this world cannot be treated. Dear brothers and sisters, among various means of transportation in heavenly kingdom, 
Something can be used only from the third kingdom of heaven. It is the cloud-like automobile. The cloud of this automobile is not made with a vapor like on this earth. It is made by God with a cloud of glory in heaven. Usually, an angel drives the cloud-like automobile. There are personally owned ones and also ones for everybody's use. In the third kingdom of heaven, there are no personally owned cloud automobiles. There are only ones for public use. Okay? They are used. They are the ones for public use, okay? Only in New Jerusalem will people be given personally owned cloud automobiles. The cloud automobile itself is indicative of great honor, dignity, and authority. The believers in New Jerusalem can travel with the Lord riding in these cloud-like automobiles. At this time, the heavenly host and angels will escort them. Just like on this earth, when a king moves from place to place, he is escorted by many ministers. Being escorted by the heavenly host and angels shows the authority and glory of the person who is escorted. In case of the believers in the second kingdom, first kingdom, and paradise, when they see cloud automobiles flying in the sky, they too want to try it themselves. Unless they get a very special permission, it's difficult to experience it even once. But the believers in the third kingdom of heaven can ride on them anytime they need, even though the motor automobiles are for public use. In New Jerusalem, however, the automobiles are given for personal use. I mean, the automobiles in New Jerusalem for private, but the one which is given to our Lord is the very special one. It is the golden cottage. And that only one man can ride on that golden cottage. So, you know, when, whenever, I will, whenever our Lord goes to the second kingdom, you know, it runs so fast and then angels are in the second kingdom of heaven in advance to minister our Lord. If we really believe this fact, we should be sanctified and be faithful in all God's house by all means. It's not just to get one cloud-like automobile, but the rewards and glory will be so different in everything. Other than this, the outer appearances will be so different as well between those who are second kingdom or under and those who are in the third kingdom or higher. The light of glory coming out from each one, the clothes and the adornments of the clothes, and the hairstyles are all different. We can immediately distinguish how much each person is sanctified and resembles the Lord, and how much each one is loved by God. One of the major differences is the length of the hair of women. In heaven, both men and women have blonde hair with a little bit of wave in it. For all men, the hair comes down to about the neck. But in the case of women, the length of the hair will be different according to the extent to which each one is sanctified. The first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 15 also says, But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her. The hair of women in paradise comes down to the shoulder. Well, I believe, you know, all of you will go to better, better places than paradise. But if you think you will just go to paradise, then you'd better, you know, grow your hair longer. But all of you should go to better places than paradise, right? It becomes longer in the first kingdom and the second kingdom, respectively. To those women in the third kingdom in New Jerusalem, long and beautiful hair will be given as rewards. For those women in the third kingdom of heaven, their hair comes down to the middle of their backs. The women in New Jerusalem will have their hair that is yet a little longer hair than this. It will come down to the base of the spine. The length of the hair itself is a glory and a reward, but the adornments will also be different according to the length. In paradise, there is no adornment given, so they have nothing in their hair. 
in the first kingdom and the second kingdom of heaven, minor decorations will be given according to each as one's rewards. But from the third kingdom of heaven, the adornments worn in their hair will have special meanings. For example, in the past, their hair decorations of queens or princesses, in Korea especially, were different from those of ordinary people. Because they symbolized the social position, they were more than just decoration. In the third kingdom of heaven, there is decoration for both men and women that they put on their head. It is the crown of life. So, God basically gives a crown to each person who is coming into the third kingdom of heaven. Just like in the case of the first and the second kingdoms of heaven. But that's not it. Depending on what kind of rewards they have piled up, depending on how much you know, glory they have given to Father God, they are given different kinds of crowns too. So the crown of life is the basic. Why did God name this the crown of life? That's because those who come into the third kingdom of heaven have passed the test of giving their lives to the Lord. Even in this world, when people pass certain qualifying tests, they are given certificates. Likewise, only those who pass the test of giving their lives for the Lord with faith will be given a crown of life. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised. So, those who go into the third kingdom of heaven is the one who loved God to the utmost degree, right? So this crown of life is given to those who love Him. Here, persevering on the trial is not just persisting steadily at something or suppressing something. It refers to a level where you don't even have to bear with anything. Even when a man has evil in his heart, he can control it to some extent. But in an extreme situation, most people cannot suppress it anymore, and it comes out as evil words or action. It was the case with Job. Job was an upright and honest man. But when an extreme test was given, what happened? When he lost his wealth and children, he seemed to be passing the test. But when the test came upon his own body, he began to complain against God. It was not just a trivial thing. From head to toe, he had boils all over his body. He was scratching himself, himself everywhere. He scratched himself and the blood came out from them. And then he began to complain against God. He also argued with his friends and got angry at them. He outwardly expressed many kinds of evil things. But when he realized his evil, he repented and changed himself. He was then able to go into the level of sanctification. Up to this day, I also had many tests of giving my life. Here, let me give you two of the testimonies. I'm not saying that through those two tests, I went into the fourth level of faith. I was in the fourth level of faith even before the opening of this church. I started this church after I already come into the whole street, whole spirit. That's why uh, I could revive even the dead when I prayed. And people could receive the blessing of conception. The reason why I explain these two cases is to help you understand what kind of test is a test of giving one's life. First, it was the dismissal from the position of a pastor in 1990. It was losing a life to a pastor. The General Assembly of the denomination that I belonged to at that time gave some orders for corrections to be made to this church. But the contents were all groundless and unreasonable. So we sent an appeal. 
We said, if they would tell us, according to the Bible, what was wrong with what we were doing, we would correct it. But the General Assembly just informed us that our appeal was being rejected because it was groundless. Some of my fellow pastors, who were senior to me in the uh, denomination, had told me something similar to this. They told me to say just Amen, even if the leaders of the denomination say that a soda is a Coke. People can easily distinguish a soda from a Coke, right? Because they have different color. They told me to say, I'm sorry, whatever the case may be. They said it was the only way for this church and I, to, to me, survive. But as God is watching everything, how can the truth be untruth or untruth the truth? If we truly believe in God and love Him, we cannot do that. Also, this church and I didn't react with any evil, but only with goodness and love. But in the General Assembly of the denomination with only 90 attendants from among 300 representatives, the bill to dismiss me was passed with 48 votes. Most of them left the meeting. 48. It's, it was illegal, but they did it in order to dismiss me from the pastoral position. Through this, it seemed that I lost my life as a pastor. Well, it happened because my church revived so greatly in a very short period of time. Since this church and other branch churches of this church were getting bigger and bigger, there were many pastors in the same denomination who were jealous of this church. They were jealous of this church. But God is faithful. He never forsakes those who keep their faith and righteousness in Him. Through this incident, it was not that our church and I died, but rather we gained a more vigorous life. God opened the way, a new way, to fully preach the fivefold gospel of holiness. And God told me previous years before it happened. Father God already told me that I would uh, make a new denomination with the fivefold gospel. And he said it would be a great blessing for this church. And right now, these things are being, uh, I mean, this is uh, mentioned in my autobiography, My Life, My Faith. If it's not the truth, then I cannot tell it to you, right? But this is all truth. And they cannot make an excuse for this. The second test to give up my life took place in 1992. It was when I bled so much. It was Saturday, June 13, 1992. In that situation, I might have been able to go to the hospital and get a simple treatment to stop the bleeding. All, you know, all I had to do was just, you know, get some kind of treatment. They just burn it with laser then the bleeding would stop. They just burn it with, with laser. But I had a determination. If I die, I die. I was always proclaiming that God is almighty and nothing is impossible for those who believed. I couldn't compromise with the world at the th threshold of death. I chose to rather lose my life than disgrace the name of God. I proclaimed and I preached that our Father God is Almighty and He governs the life and f death and fortune and misfortune. And God is governing my life. How can I depend on the world even though I preach the gospel that our Father God governs life and death? If I leave, that is the will of God. If I die, that is also the will of God. So I completely depend on Father God Almighty. 
Father God is almighty, and He can revive even the dead. So I completely depended on Father God because He is almighty Father God. So my life actually ended, and my spirit went before the Lord. But the Lord revived me. He let me fulfill all the duties given to me at the end time completely. Dear brothers and sisters, to pass a test of giving one's life is something like this. And I also passed the tests in 1998 and 1999. Even in a test of dying, we just choose the truth. Even in a situation of actually dying, we still firmly keep our faith. How can we do that? We can do it if we love God enough. The fourth level of faith, which is required to go into the third kingdom of heaven, is the faith to love God to the utmost degree. More than anything else, more than anybody else. Because they have this kind of faith, they can pass even the test of sacrificing their lives. But even in this world, we don't have little children take college entrance exams. They attend elementary, middle school, or senior high schools, and they take many kinds of exams. Through the exams, they check their progress and go up to the next step. It's the same with the tests of tracking the faith. After we receive the Holy Spirit, and as our faith grows, there are constant tests that are both small and big. In our everyday life, we have the test of choosing between the truth and untruth. All the forefathers and prophets and apostles of the Lord and the men of God, they all had to pass all these tests. Abraham passed all these tests, and he was able to receive all the best blessing from Father God. If we choose the truth every time, we pass the tests and go into spirit to that same extent. But if we compromise with the world every time, our faith cannot grow. It may even backslide. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 says, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit. The man of flesh longs for the something that belongs to the flesh. And it is against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposite, in, in, in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. Even if you live a very diligent believing life, even if you pray fervently, sometimes you become poor in your spirit. Why is that? Father God tells you to rejoice all the time and pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. Then why you feel poor in your spirit? Why you don't have peace in your heart? Because you are standing against the desires of the Spirit. You long for the things that the Holy Spirit doesn't want. That's why you feel troubled in your heart. So when you feel troubled in your heart, that it means that you already committed sin. You have to realize it. When you do evil things, when you commit sin, then it is against the Holy Spirit. You feel troubled in your heart. Also, Romans chapter 7, verse 22 and 23 says, For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. The inner man refers to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right? The truth and the Spirit. Those who come into Spirit always enjoy the law of God, right? Am I true or not? But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. If you just joyfully concur with the law of God and follow the desires of the Spirit, you can easily pass the tests of faith. But the, but the problem is, the desires of the flesh, the self that was made before we came into the Lord, tries to live by its own will. People think we have to live by the word of God with the brain, but their heart is not the same. 
they seek their own benefit. For example, they know that they must not eat something, but they eat it, following the desires of flesh. They know they must not look at something, but they look following the desires of flesh. They know they must not take it, but they take it following the desires of flesh. They know they must not speak, but they cannot control themselves. They know the word of God, but because they acted in an opposite way, their hearts are afflicted. But those who truly love God cut off and cast away these desires of flesh. Even in this world, when people love somebody, they change it so much. Usually, lazy people become diligent for their loved ones. Those who are not usually very neat become neat and clean in their outlook appearances. Even though fleshly love doesn't last long, love has this kind of power. Therefore, if we understand the love of the Lord who died in the place of us to save us from hell, we cannot help but love the Lord too. With the love for the Lord, we can give up our lot desires to seek our own benefit. Also, we can cast off the forms of evil that the Lord hates. In any situation, we have to kill the self that tries to live according to our own desires. It is just as the Apostle Paul confessed, I die daily. If one always follows the will of God in any situation, it is the same as giving his life. That's because he has completely cast off his flesh that was forming his self. This is referred to as living martyrdom. Living martyrdom? What is that? Please listen to me carefully, okay? This is to be faithful to the point of death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 says, Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Usually, people think that to be faithful is to diligently fulfill one's duty. But the kind of faithfulness that God truly wants is spiritual faithfulness. Above all, we have to accomplish the heart of spirit and become His true children. Of course, we have to fulfill our duties at the same time. We can find ourselves while we are performing our duties, and it will be easier for us to change. In other words, those who struggle against sin to the point of shedding blood is the one who are faithful until death. Since they love the Lord and God, they live by the word of God. But sometimes there are people who are diligent in fulfilling their duties, but they are neglecting their spiritual faithfulness. Even though you are faithful, physically, later you got sick, you got cancer, and many accidents happen. Even though you are faithful. Why is that? That's because your faithfulness was the faithfulness of the flesh. You must give spiritual faithfulness. And then, along with the uh, uh, physical and fleshly faithfulness, then it can become the faithfulness in all houses. And then you can go into New Jerusalem. If we have fervor to do voluntary works with our sweat, we also have to be diligent in casting off sins. We always have to check the sinful natures that are remaining in us. Then we have to pray fervently to pull them out completely. If we have to keep it in mind all the times so that evil acts will not come out. Even when we have a thought of untruth for a moment, we have to pray not to have the same thoughts again. We have to try to pull out even the slightest bit of agitation and the stirring of evil in our heart. Nobody can do it for us. With the humble heart, we have to do it step by step. There may be a difference in the process, but everybody should go through this process to go into spirit. Spirit is not visible or tangible, so we may not have a clear idea of what to do. But still, 
when we keep on casting off sins with faith because, our, because of our love for the Lord. God says we are faithful. Of course, God the Father shows greater love for you as you go into spirit more and more. Whenever you overcome trials or refinements, then you are given certain kind of blessing. Surely, spiritual blessing first. When your spirit and souls become prosperous, then you will receive material blessing as well. Health, material, they're all following. Why? Because you passed the test. Then Father God is pleased with you. So God gives you the, the blessing. The answers to your prayers come more quickly, and the prosperity and everything is also different. So, even if you may feel it is difficult to go into spirit in the beginning, the more you change into spirit, the easier it becomes. Dear brothers and sisters, the crown of life is given when we pass the test of giving up life by faith. So those who become martyrs for the name of the Lord will receive the crown of life in the third kingdom of heaven. Even if they are not fully sanctified at the moment of their death, their heart is acknowledged by the martyrdom. Why is that so? If they have the heart to become a martyr, to become their faith, it means they can surely become sanctified. If they have more time to live on this earth, they can surely cast off all flesh and have heart of spirit. But dying in a mission field cannot all be considered as martyrdom. Also, in a case where one thinks he kept faith by not compromising with the world, in God's sight, it's not martyrdom. On the outside, both may seem to be the same kind of martyrdom, but the faith and heart of each one is different. There are people who become a martyr by faith and true love, but there are different cases too. The scripture says the Lord will give the crown of life after one is approved. About the kind of martyrdom that God approves, I will tell you in detail when I later introduce the cases of going into the third kingdom by martyrdom. Now, among those who are saved by conscience judgment, some of them go into the third kingdom of heaven. About what the conscience judgment is and what the standards are, I will explain it in the next session. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this session, I told you about the meaning of the crown of life that is given in the third kingdom of heaven. I also told you with what kind of faith you can go into the third kingdom of heaven. It is the faith to love the Lord to the utmost degree, more than anything else. And this faith and love have to be approved by not ourselves, but by the Lord. What is the standard for the Lord to approve it? It is that we have to pass the test of giving our lives for the Lord. If you have true faith, if you truly have faith and if you truly love God, it's not, easy, it's not difficult to pass the test. I have passed those countless tests from the beginning of this church. How can I call it a test? before I started this church. I cannot recall the moment that I said, I, uh, I'm, in, I'm under a trial before this church. You know, sometimes when you live your everyday life, you come across with many things in your life, right? So we cannot call everything, you know, trials or tests. But after I started this church, there are so many people who tried to kill me. They hindered me from doing God's work. But since I have faith, since I loved God, I passed all the tests. And there are so many tests that, you know, uh, it cannot be easily bypassed if only with fleshly faith. The first church was started in a uh, marketplace. Father God told me to start the church at that place. It was not just an ordinary building. It's for temporary use. 
since it was the temporary, we knew that some people will come and break it. But Father God told me to build it for temporary house. Even though he knew that the people would come and break it, he told me to build it. But since it was the word of God, I obeyed. Whenever I constructed it, people came and broke that in a church building, the temporary building. But I obeyed. But I obeyed. I think I did twice or three times. It was hard to obey from the fleshly point of view, but I obeyed since it is the word of God. Then, once I obeyed, there, there was a blessing. There was a reason. Since our Father God is the God of justice, there is a reason. After that, there was a way to go into the deep, the bigger place to build a church. There is a reason. By in obeying the word of God, we happen to receive blessing to move our church into a bigger place. We all became one. All the congregation and this church became one. When we saw our church building, the temporary building was you know, uh, destroyed by those people, we were so united in, in one heart. And we longed for moving to a bigger place and construct a building. And we came to pray so fervently, everyone, uh, everyone, every member of the church. Then we moved our church to a bigger place. Father God prepared everything. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39 also says, He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. Of course, if we keep our faith even under severe persecutions and become a martyr, it is a really giving one's life. But there is a living martyrdom as well. It is to kill the self within us completely and follow the desires of the Spirit alone. And it is the way to go into Spirit. Until the moment to go into Spirit, there are so much shedding blood. In order to struggle against sin, you have to shed blood and you have to overcome all the persecutions. You have to cast off every form of evil. That's why you are given the crown of life. It is the same as dying a martyr. In order to do that, we have to completely cast off the flesh that has been forming ourselves. We have to cast off all forms of evil too. After all, we can follow the desires of the Spirit 100% only when we cultivate Spirit in our heart with Spirit 100%. And the driving force to do this is the love for the Lord. We have to love the Lord to the utmost degree and more than ourselves. That's why we can give up ourselves. The Lord also loves this kind of person so much. He gives them not only glory in heaven, but also amazing blessings on this earth. He gives them blessings of a different dimension than when they were still in flesh. I hope all of you will long for this level of spirit more. By doing so, may you come into spirit and hold spirit all the more quickly. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing power of God. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, please lay your hand on all your children and on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe. 
and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts, drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleansed with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five viscera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells, manifest the power most high of the creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses, go away. All contagious diseases, go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer. AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nerves breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the power most high of the creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive, rejoin broken bones, and make all burnt parts of the body perfect and whole. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil spirits, wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging spirits, deceiving spirits, be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened. Darkness, go away. May the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them strength to call out to you. Give them strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them. Answer the desires of their hearts and prayers. Give them faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them well. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.